1967 Zenith Royal 51 all transistor pocket radio AM FM a friend picked this up after he saw how well my uh, Royal 810 worked out in a backcountry environment the sensitivity he was impressed with it so he picked this up and I think he purchased a brick so I put some batteries in it and of course it's totally dead so I start looking at it I'm like wow what is this big gap up here at the top and I realize oh it's where the AM bar antenna should be so that's missing the screws look they look like they've been in and out a thousand times look at the heads on those screws it's like a Phillips that they turn into a Torx the stud is missing the standoff post that should be screwed in right there is missing so this thing's this is a almost a brick it's going to be interesting to see I mean this thing really look at the rings around the uh, the little nuts there this thing has really really seen its share of being worked over I'm counting nine transistors in here which seems to be about standard which is what the book says it's supposed to have so it doesn't look like there's any transistors missing and it doesn't look like any of these IF cores have been tampered with which is a good thing I'm using two of these that should give me about 6.6 .6 volts I have a uh, milliamp meter in series so let's turn it on and see what kind of current draw we get because it is stone dead it makes no sound at all well, about 18 milliamps or so see if moving this does anything yeah it drops down a little bit that's on AM that's what it should do So why is it so dead? Let's put it on FM. Turn the volume all the way up. And then tune it. I don't see anything, but it, sh it shouldn't... Let me compare it to mine. Let's see what the current dry is on mine. The one that's working. All right, here's the one I restored in a previous video. Wow, it's much lower. Protect those who are too young. It's much lower. It's like uh, 11 milliamps, and we'll go to AM. It's like 8 milliamps. Well, th this one is a different chassis. Maybe that's why the current draws higher. Or maybe some of these capacitors are slightly leaky. Anyway, let's get it apart. I, I think it's kind of doomed. We're measuring 12 ohms on the speaker, but we also are probably in parallel with the audio output transformer. I would imagine. Maybe if I push this back. This is the earphone. We need to get the speaker disconnected to test it. Actually I made a mistake there. There is no audio output transformer. This is direct coupled. There's a driver transformer but there is no. So it's isolated by that 50 microfarad capacitor. So we're measuring 12 ohms there. That's good. The speaker is we should try and feed a signal or something into it. So we have current draw. We have a speaker that works. 
and we have absolutely no sound from the speaker no hiss no pop when I turn it on it is just it is just dead quiet I mean I guess that capacitor could be open but that capacitor would have to be 100 percent open I would think even if we had a problem with the audio output stage we would still have a little crackle or pop or maybe let me, let me ohm it out on the other side of the, the earphone jack. All right, well, the earphone jack is wide open, so that would explain that. It's one of those switching earphone jacks. When you plug the headset in, it disconnects the speaker. I think I'm just going to bypass that. No one's ever going to use an old radio like this with a pair of headphones. Look at how worn out these screws are. Seriously, how many hundreds of times was this thing taken apart? This is not like some cheap honcoidial junk soft metal. This should be Zenith. These screws should go in and out like 50 times before they start to wear out like that. The headphone jack has been bypassed. You can no longer use your $300 pair of Beats premium headphones with this radio. Here we go. Still nothing. Okay. I think I found another problem. Who saw this and I didn't? That would probably make it kind of quiet. That's the 50 microfarad that couples the output of the driver stage directly to the speaker. But the the, the this was open 100% because I got 12 ohms now between ground and the capacitor. Let's measure this anyway. It should be negative 3 volts from the negative side of that capacitor. To ground which would indicate the audio output is sort of working see there on that collector three volts comes up to the negative of that capacitor and we have negative 3.1 which should probably be right because we're a little bit over six so that looks good let me find a 50 microfarad capacitor or should I try and solder this one back on okay we have this we also have a tantalum I found. We should check the tantalum. What, what was the ESR on this? 0 0.34? 0 0.39. Well, the tantalum is dead, which is too bad, because these usually have a microscopic ESR. I mean, these things are really good, so I guess I'll have to put this one in. Okay, that should get me some Jason J.J. Cruz points. Let's see if we can make music now. Ooh. At least I'm getting all sound from the speaker. I wonder. There's our something for an AM antenna here. Well, there's activity now, but it's still, I mean, no reception on AM or FM. AM, I can understand why, because there's no antenna. But FM, uh, it's totally quiet. Is this another one of those where the 
oscillator transistor is bad the this transistor right here all right Ten point seven modulations on um, stupid pointer thing broke off, but you know what? Somebody put a scratch right there, so that's good. So let's see, ten point seven. It's around ten point seven. Uh, let's see. Nobody's home here. Oh yeah. So we're getting 10.7 through this thing. Let's see if we go to AM. See, that's AM and we'll go to 455. Uh, four. Not used to this thing. 455 would be about right there on AM. Hell yes. Go back to FM. Uh, we'll go to 10.7. Whatever. I don't know where I'm feeding it into. I just clipped it on somewhere there, but it's. It's working, so that's going into the second IF. I should try and go into the first FM IF. I tried going into here, and I'm not getting anything. And I started looking at the circuit. This is the AM bar antenna. It looks like the AM bar antenna has to be in place for the AM and the FM to work. The reason why is you have negative 4.9 volts here that comes up through here through here and biases the first FMIF on without this antenna in place this is not going to get its bias it's a voltage divider So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try jumping this. I jumped the AM antenna, which should give us the bias on the uh, IF transistor. And I have one negative one volt there, which sounds about right. And I'm kind of following the signal path through this thing. We have three FM IF stages. This is number three this is number two this is number one so basically this one drives into this transformer actually it drives into two of these and then from there it goes into this transistor which drives into this transformer so it kinda goes from here to here to here to out this is the detectors pair here so I'm getting signal from here out. I'm not getting signal from here out. So this transistor appears not to be working. I'm working my way backwards through the stages. And... Okay. 
can that's this IF transformer and then if I go back to this IF transformer right right there nothing so I'm not getting anything through this transistor what I need to do what would be helpful is if I could find the factory service manual on this which would show me actually what traces are what and make it much easier looking at the Royal 810 this is the base comes over to this IF can this is the collector that comes up here connects basically to this IF can this is the emitter we come over here uh, this is the collector this is the base so you get nothing through so let's do some voltage checks the collector should have around 4.8 let's say we've got 5.5 that's unacceptably too high I mean it should be a little high but the base should be around negative 1.2 it's negative 1.6 the emitter should be around negative point eight say it's negative point one so this transistor is bad it's not conducting that's the first transistor that's bad I guess what we could do is put the uh, signal tracer on this and see if there's anything going into that but I kind of doubt you'd pick it up okay I'm looking at the base of that transistor that's bad with the signal tracer and it is the FM is tuning it's very very low but you can hear it is the front end is working so the well I need to disconnect the antenna and see if it goes down but it appears the RF and converter section are working Love me some Lady Gaga. Here's our transistor. It's a diode with a forward voltage of 2.18 volts. Alright, let's try this. This is a GT309D. Um, GT309, 120 megahertz. So I have A, D, and C. Let's try a D since I have more of these. Base emitter collector. Okay, I think I got that in there right. Alright, here we go. Let the music play. Boy, is that weak. Okay, what's going on here? Did I put that in there right? Yeah, but that's the volume wide open. Where's the sensitivity?
The, the AM's not going to do anything with the antenna missing. It is crackling though. Ooh, take your time, do it right. Try a different transistor in there, I guess. Okay, this is a... The same thing. It, it sounds like something's holding it back. I don't, I don't know how to describe that, but... Um, like, it's just... Almost like there's something loading down the output sections, what it sounds like, but huh. Open capacitor, maybe bad audio transistor. Okay, I'm listening to channel six TV, radio, channel six, television, analog, channel six. I'm going to go back to this other transistor and compare the sensitivity. Well, so far, I've been trying different ones. So far, the GT313 has worked the best. It's the loudest so far. Actually, that woke it up a little bit. Oh, blah, 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 I guess having the speaker drive into a towel is not the brightest thing in the world. Is Why is that channel showing up at the bottom and at the top? What's up with that? The low end sensitivity is trash. It's trash. Let me try a different transistor. Okay, even though this worked better, in the interest of time, I stuck that in there because it fits. I can't get this thing to fit in there. So, um,. I have this I pulled out of some $9 Walmart cassette radio thing. Um, I wonder if this AM antenna would work. Kind of looks the same. It looks like it's got two coils. Uh, it's got the same oscillator can, but it uses a IC. So I'm going to pull this off of here and see if it'll work in the Zenith. Okay, according to the service manual, which I took a picture of, I got this hooked up right. It's the same thing. This has two coils on it, so let's see. Wow, and I don't even have the capacitor, the tuning cap, hooked up yet.
That's impressive. And then 10 ain't right. Listen to that one. And nah, it ain't good. It, that ain't that in 10 ain't quite right. It's a lot of background noise. But it's working. California assets over 150,000 uh, gross value. That's the minimum to go to court probate. Uh, you should probably think about it. Have uh, ownership of any real estate, then yeah, you should probably have a trust. And then the third one. The the decision of the children. I don't know where you fare on that trust. scale. You do not want the state bank. of California managing money for a minor child if the parent passes away. Uh, think how happy you are with the way Sacramento spends your tax dollars. How would you like them to go ahead and do the same thing with your estate you're leaving your children? Uh, not a lot of fun. Not a lot. I've actually heard some horror stories about that with where the money can be tied up for, for literally, if somebody comes and contests a probate, oh gosh, forget it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm just speaking if everything goes smoothly. Yeah. I mean, if you have a two-year-old child and the parents die, you got a 16-year-old probate. Wow. And you want the state of California to manage that money for 16 years? How good are they doing at it? Yeah, <laughs> amazing. Uh, let me uh, throw this out there again. Uh, so Doug does seminars every other week in Orange County. They're on it's weird that the antenna could cause it to be noisy, but uh, it's got to be it. People go down and, and uh, take a listen to this and take a look at the seminar. You get to ask any question that you want, and it's easy to... and justice leave me not to those who crush me be a surety for thy servants and let not the proud press me down my eyes fail for thy salvation and for the word of thy righteousness and deal with thy servant according to thy mercy O Lord and teach me thy statutes I am thy servant give me understanding that I may know thy testimonies So obviously the capacitor that's in here is way too small for this antenna. So I'm trying to find the right capacitor value. This is at the bottom of the band. Doesn't have a lot of impact at the bottom of the band. I'm going to peek it right there on AM 1260. It's measuring 29 picofarads. Okay, I got it pretty close. I got a... I got a 22 in there, which it seems to like. Can't lose with 22s.
All right, I took a look at the S curve and it's way off the FMS curve. So let's try and peek and tweak this thing. I know the alignment is jacked up on it. So we'll start here. I'm on FM 10.7. No, it must not be. Uh, this one? No. This one? Amateur hour. Who? Waking her up. How about this one? That one was about on. Okay, this one. Okay, these ones create the S curve. I don't want to screw with those too much. Um, uh, so let's see, bring this down. That's the FM modulation, we'll turn the AM up. Then we want to do frequency 455 kilohertz. this one Wow Okay, I'm reviewing this. So yeah, we got three 455s. So we'll do those first.
Okay, so that's a 455. Now we'll go back to 10.7. Okay, here we go. This one doesn't seem to do anything. Okay, I've got this pretty good, uh, both AM and FM IF. Let's do the S-curve. Actually, the S-curve looks perfect now. Uh, if, I turn the, if I turn the ratio detector, that's what the S-curve looked like before I started. That's what it should look like. I'd love for some AM radio buff to explain to me why if that replacement antenna is causing the background noise on the AM. It's just like a lot of background noise or is it a bad germanium transistor? It's just weird. Anyway, uh, I think I got it working pretty good. All I got to say about these Royal 51, Royal 810s is if you want to adopt one of these, you better be pretty good at fixing multiple problems in a radio because these things are complicated and they are troublesome with the bad transistors and other problems. Hear all that background noise? It's like it's got a waterfall behind it, and it only really does it on signals. Give it all away, well guess what? We're going to tax it anyway. So that way... I mean, the selectivity and the sensitivity is there. It's just, it's noisy. I mean, it's usable, it's just noisy. Don't seem to have Tim's. And then aspirate it. You know, that means to um, suction it out. Only uh, gifts that exceed certain amounts are... Go. The guy's at home. All state with an all state agent, you get a local expert and help find the best coverage for you. And because they live in your community, you can. Wow, it's actually picking up the stations between 88 and uh, 90. Those are really weak. This is working really good to pick those up. Okay, in the UK, it all happened. So here we have our family home where I grew up. And... the Nissan Leaf Plus, over 200 now. So that range anxiety is going away, but when you're in a situation where, see, my range anxiety is, okay, can I find a DC quick charge station somewhere and have a cup of coffee for 20 minutes? Yes, my time? car gives me range anxiety. Going fewer and farther between with these hydrogen well, I But I will say, I, I don't really have, in the year that I've had this car, I have not really, for the most part, except for that one long trip, experienced range anxiety with it, because you just have to... Do you have range anxiety? I have range anxiety. You know for sure what the uh, how many kilograms of hydrogen are at each station at any.
It's weird you have you have classical, commercial free classical, then right above it you have the blah 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 station. Seems like it could be a little louder. I like this song. This is a good song. It's all I can give you. It's kind of got that 80s bass line vibe thing to it. Nueve veinticuatro. 